Thank you, David, for that uh, very inspiring and very informative. David teaches physics, so we, uh, that's an excellent condensation of uh, many of the points of 9-11. I'd like to uh, welcome now Lieutenant Colonel David W. Gap. Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Gap, and I'm a retired U.S. Air Force pilot with 31 years service in the Air Force. I just retired in late 2009 with a background in flying fighter aircraft as well as a graduate of the Air Force's flight safety course. I'm an experienced aircraft accident investigator as well as safety board president. We currently find ourselves involved in a nearly nine year long war in Afghanistan, which has a projected Department of Defense budget of $120 billion for 2011, while spending an estimated $140 billion in Afghanistan this year. We now have more U.S. troops killed in less than two years President Obama has been in office than the 575 troops that were killed in Afghanistan in seven years under President Bush. Troop levels in Afghanistan have expanded from 33,000 when President Obama took, entered office in January 2009. We have 98,000 troops there this month. Our federal deficit will be approximately $1 trillion next year, while military spending remains nearly 50% of our U.S. federal budget. We need a way out of this mess to refocus our country's priorities on investing in education, infrastructure, and job creation. The ongoing war in Afghanistan is based on alleged involvement by agents of Al-Qaeda, of which many professional organizations have serious questions that are yet to be answered by the U.S. government. One of the many professional organizations that is proud to question the official U.S. government's version of the events of September 11, 2001 is being announced today military officers for 9-11 Truth. It now has over 300 founding members and can be found at militaryofficersfor911truth.org. In my professional opinion as an aviator, I have the following concerns, which I would like to entitle Aviation Improbabilities. Now, I'm not saying that these are impossible to happen as individual occurrences but that it is highly improbable that they would all occur in a series to have the outcome as professed by the U.S. government. The improbability of all eight airline pilots voluntarily giving up control of their aircraft to individuals stating that they have box cutters and have or will kill passengers. This is not established protocol to give up control of the aircraft and responsibility of safety for all your passengers and crew. The improbability of all eight airline pilots being killed without a deliberate violent flight control reaction that would upend any cockpit invasion. The improbability of all eight airline pilots not entering the hijack or emergency code into the transponders, alerting air traffic control of a serious problem. The improbability, if the above events occurred, that the marginally trained hijackers would be able to operate the navigational systems necessary and fly to specific points in airspace using instrument flight rules. The improbability of maneuvering the airliners above 400 knots airspeed, which is considered high speed, and precisely striking comparatively small World Trade Center 1 and 2. Professional pilots and simulators have about a one in three chance of accomplishing this maneuver. Improbability of maneuvering American Airlines Flight 77 from 35,000 feet descending to hit the Pentagon, as stated by the U.S. government in an analysis of the flight data recorder. Specifically, a 330 degree turn from 7,000 feet descending at a controlled airspeed of 290 to 300 knots airspeed to precisely strike the Pentagon at ground level by a minimally trained, unqualified hijacker. As a military fighter pilot, I have questions as to why numerous air defense systems were not utilized that day, including intercept aircraft that had plenty of time from 8.14 a.m 
when Boston Center air traffic controllers realized something was wrong with American Airlines Flight 11 after it did not respond to authorization to change flight levels. There were three air defense exercises ongoing on September 11th, and their command posts and chain of commands were fully staffed. Otis Air Force Base, Massachusetts had Air National Guard F-15 fighter interceptors nearby, which were airborne too late at 8.53. Flight 11 hit the North Tower at 8.45 a.m., followed by Flight 175 hitting the South Tower at 9.03 a.m. Many other bases, including Andrews Air Force Base outside Washington, D.C., and Langley Air Force Base, Virginia, have fighters on alert or available. Why did none of them launch in time to intercept Flight 77 as it did not strike until 9.37 a.m.? Finally, as an experienced aircraft investigator, I have serious questions regarding several of the crash sites. Again, it is improbable that of the eight black boxes, in reality, a bright orange flight data recorder and a bright orange cockpit voice recorder on each of the aircraft, only the flight data recorder from Flight 77 into the Pentagon, and both recorders from Flight 93 in Pennsylvania were recovered. With over 1.5 million man hours of time sorting through debris at the Fresh Kills site in New Jersey, it is improbable that we don't have more aircraft evidence of what actually occurred in each of the unfortunate airliners that day. Thank you again for your time and consideration of these facts.